Good afternoon. A uh, little chat for a Sunday afternoon, in fact. Um, thinking about some things that have been brewing for a while, and with what's going on currently with the life experience we're all dealing with, I want to drop some thoughts about how we can take care of ourselves and why we need, at this point in time, to really focus on ourselves. There's a lot in the media, as you may have guessed, about, um, well, no, it's not saying it. There's a lot of information out there, I'll put it that way, generically speaking, where there is a certain... Um, <laughs> I don't want to say this. This is going to be interesting. There's a disparity out there about allegiance to, following along, believing in certain um, precautions. Let's say that way, regarding what's going on right now. At the same time, there's a lot of... My perception, this is by the way, this is all my perception. There's a lot of people out there and groups out there that are looking at other places and going they should be doing something or they aren't doing something or I should be doing what they're doing or something like that. This is a lot is it's a lot of throwing back and forward of, of um, comparison up and down that's going on. That's one thing that's going on. The second piece is that right now we're in this place, in this conversation, in this way of dealing with um, life is that a lot of us are still paranoid about what's out there. And I understand there's a reason for that with the concern about the virus and everything else that's going around. But truthfully, this is probably one of the most ideal times to focus on ourselves. And I mean this, and I'll tell you what I'm meaning by that in a moment. I'm jumping ahead of myself. But recognizing the fact that this is a lot of time for many of us. Now, I won't include myself this way. I'll explain that in a moment too. Where you're basically being, in a way, forced to be incarcerated in your own space. I know it's called self-isolation or social distancing or that sort of stuff. And by the way, I have a big issue with the term social distancing because it's not social distancing. It's physical distancing. Because you can still be social from six feet away, and especially over social media. So social distancing is a, is a term I don't necessarily agree with. But what I do want to speak to is this understanding that we have this um, voluntarily forced isolation. That's one way of putting it. And for a lot of people, they're not, it's not usual for them. Now, I'm saying why I'm different from that, because I was telling a friend of mine recently, I've been basically isolated on my in a way because I'm on my computer so much working with clients and and you know doing a lot of things in my work that I have been isolated without really um labeling it as such you know solo entrepreneurs kind of the way it works which means that when I wanted to go out before that was no big deal now I'm not supposed to go out I feel trapped even the situation didn't change but for some people who had a nine to five job they went to every day or a school they went to every day and they're coming home and now they can't leave home in quotes because there is a there are there are caveats to that of course there's this interesting place people are feeling where they feel like lost or even, 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 well, almost even was bored as well. Yes, there's an endless supply of things through streaming video, Netflix, Amazon Prime, all sorts of stuff. There's also, there's also plenty of things we do. There's been articles posted, well, you know, it's a great time now to learn, learn your hobby, like, like playing, playing a guitar or learning a language or learning how to cook. Well, <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine about this because I do work from home and do a lot of things on my computer I don't have much downtime you know I cook when I want to eat and I and I do watch Netflix late at night sometimes when I want to take my mind off what I'm focusing on but it's like to have a new hobby to start a new hobby has not been a priority for me because I've been busy doing what I do the way I do it but what I'm very clear about though as, a, as what I'm going to try and explain here is that I've been also very focused on my own self-development my own self-support my own reflection of myself in the world which is why my work's been shifting the last six months or so and in fact what's interesting is the timing of this if you're watching my posts and my talk recently i've been talking about what i call self-mastery which is an interesting term it's kind of a global caveat no excuse me a global bucket to put things in and for those of you who know me i've been known as the love docs for many years i'm a relationship coach i help women find love in relationships it's been a primary focus of mine but underneath that for the last 10 years more than actually it's been this desire to help my clients learn to love themselves first. And I've done, I've got self-love meditation, all these things I've created because for my clients, bringing them back to themselves first is the biggest step towards having a healthy relationship with anybody else, period. That's, by the way, a bullet point you can write down somewhere. Until you have a healthy relationship with yourself, you won't have a healthy relationship with anybody else. That's a fact of existence. So there. So I've been calling this term self-mastery because I'm realizing my work goes deeper than that and also more independent of relationship conversations. I've been finding myself really pulled into conversations that are helping people re-empower themselves to realign back to who they are and to really understand that when they start tuning into their own heart and their own understanding of who they are, life starts to change around them. 
you know, one of the one of the teachings, and in fact, part of the title today I talked about was um, in the title is something else. I quoted from Reverend Michael who from his sermon this morning. I was watching online because we're not going to Agape now because that, that's all you know distancing stuff. Anyway, the piece I want to speak to though is that we are in this paradigm now where how we express ourselves in the world has to start with who we are. The world around us is very much no longer about comparisons because we're all, in, we're all at home. I mean, yeah, you can change the backdrop of your videos or your pictures and stuff. Your selfies get going to get improved, but that's, that's really, that's a, that's, a, that's a loser's game. It's really about connection because now we're in a place where connection means a whole different thing than it did before. Connection to yourself first. Again, I'm going to keep paying self-support first. And connection to other people is no longer something you just got somebody and hug them and say hi to them. A friend of mine posted, I saw earlier, um, she posted something about, you know, for the, it's like for those people who hug, this is a really challenging time. And I agree with you. I agree with that too. Because I, I'm definitely, as much as I like having my own time, I love connecting. Like today would have been a gappy. Normally, I would probably hug about 400 people altogether over a period of 2,000 people going through services. Ain't happening now. <laughs> it's isolating. So what to do in the meantime? The timing, I mean, the timing is very interesting because basically what's on Tuesday, if we stay on schedule, my, my, my friend Katie and myself have been planning for a while now, for quite a while, way before the, when the virus started, to start to launch a mastermind called Inspired Heart Mastery, which aligns to my teaching about self-mastery. It's becoming very clear now. My work is in the world. It'll be people do this because we all need to remember, all of us, and looking at myself as well on the camera, including myself, is to really start to bring back to ourselves that autonomy. And that mastery of self, so that when we're watching the world out there, we can be more of a witness and less of a puppet. We can be a responsive participant versus a blind sheep. And those extremes, I know I'm putting it that way. One, just make sure you get this point clear. And one thing oh, that was the other piece we talked about. So again, it's talking about how Reverend Michael's sermon this morning included a phrase which I put into the title, and I explain. I'll have to look it up what I wrote afterwards because I forgot what it was. Now, I wrote it down. That's why it's in the title. But one thing he also talks about, and I really think this is true as well, it's not so much that we, um, we'll see it when we'll, no, let me get the right way around. <laughs> it's like we we'll believe it when we see it. It's kind of what we've been taught in the world. Like when you see something, you go, oh, now I believe it. That's not how this works anymore. What really comes to the point, place we're working from is the other way around. Basically, we start to believe, we start to see it once we believe it, because everything in the world came from thought. And that's a big spiritual thing I just dropped in your lap, so consider that one for a second. Which means that really we've got to start focusing on ourselves because it's our thinking that creates our reality. Okay, I've given you like three powerful teachings that may just blow your mind. So let me just regroup for a second so I don't like completely freak you out. So part of that and getting an understanding is that is that this world didn't get didn't get created by accident. This environment, this planet we live on. This is Sunday, so I can go spiritual on you. But the understanding is that what we create the idea of designing something, making things happen, like the phone, the phone I'm shooting this video on, the lights I'm using to to light my video so I don't get the shadow across my nose. That's all stuff people were thinking of before they were designed. People created those in their head, they designed these ideas. That makes sense, right? That means everything, including this government, was created from thought first. Think about that one for a second. So understanding your life is predicated on your thinking about it first. You have the power to create. Not so much you have the power to create, you have the responsibility to create and you are thinking all the time. So whatever you're creating, basically, and let me put this one on your plate, it's number five in your lap to think about, is if you don't like what you're looking at in the world, the way your life is going, you created it from the way you were thinking. The power of thought dictates your reality. And another way put, another way to talk about it in my teachings from what I've learned from my other teachings is that the outer experience is a reflection of inner reality. Boy, I'm just I'm bringing them all out today. These were the big guns of understanding, by the way. So if you're taking these teachings in, you want to write them down. Because there's a lot of things in here that you can take into your life and change everything. So my invitation to you is to look at your life from the inside out. To look at your experience, especially when you are in isolation, or if you're just isolated or separated from other people, is a good time to spend time with yourself. Yes, there's all the new hobbies you can do and all the streaming videos you can watch. But here's the thing I want to invite you to consider is how do you want your life internally to be different when this is all di all over? Because I do believe there's going to be an end to this um, virus experience at some point, whether it's by, well, I'm not, I'm not going to say whether it's by because the very reasons going on. But understanding this is not a permanent condition we're in right now. This is a temporary condition, a an uncomfortable one perhaps, 
and a limiting one perhaps, but it's temporary. We will get to the other side of this, even though it's only been for this country, maybe three weeks, whereas in China it's been like three months. So we've got a ways to go yet. And basically what we're seeing by May or June, most of this country will be the other side of it. I suspect, I don't know, don't hold me to that. I don't know the facts, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, I don't, I don't have proof on this, but it feels like that's the framework we're looking at. It's about a three, four month cycle. Hopefully so. And certainly being in LA, I'm trusting because I've been hearing stories and reports and posts that the virus is heat um, averse, that when it gets warmer in LA again, that might diminish the um, vir 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 virality, that's the word. Um, the contagion, let's put it that way. Anyway, back on topic because I'm getting way off topic again. So recognizing your outer experience is a reflection of inner reality, which is where I left off, is understanding that if you're not enjoying what's happening out there, then consider what may be going in here and in here, point in my chest. Getting clear about those two pieces, getting them into alignment, into agreement, is where everything changes. So when I'm talking about this thing about self mastery, which has been my more recent theme that I'm launching the more clearly because it's become more passionate for me because it's really been everything by the way if you haven't seen my broadcast before I I did a thousand Facebook lives up until um, a month and a half ago that was about three years worth but in all of those teachings I was dropping seeds about this all the way through so now I'm calling it self mastery as being blatant because that's what it's about and I'm actually gonna I've got some things brewing already this like I was meditating this morning and I got some real clear hits about I'm gonna create launching some things about self mastery I already have an idea of calling something a self-mastery movement or a self-mastery revolution. You can let me know in the comments which one you prefer, by the way. Um, still playing with those two titles, and I may launch a group on that, and I'm probably going to launch some other conversations about that. But a part of that is going to be what's launching this week, which, as I mentioned before, is my friend Katie and I are launching our uh, Inspired Heart Mastery, which is really taking mastery of the heart into the world. So if you're interested in that, message me. I'll leave, I'm not going to put links in the comments because I'm going to post this video in other places, and I don't want to, be, I want to respect the boundaries of those groups. So bottom line is, my call to action is, message me. <laughs> Any of this makes sense, or your questions, you want to get support, message me. That's simple as I'm putting it, no links in there, because I want to respect the boundaries of that. But my, my invitation to you, my encouragement to you, is take this time, this required, um, forced time, to put yourself back in yourself. Because one of the challenges we face in this world, especially in the Western world, is we're very much focused on the outside. We're very distracted and governed by what's happening out there. And frankly, it can be really a roller coaster of upset and, and, and depression when we don't necessarily match up the way we want to. Comparison's a loser's game, by the way, just to be clear about that. That's another, another um, quotable. <laughs> I've got to go back and watch the video. I've got about five, six quotables in this one. But the thing is, when you recognize that who you are is unique, who you are is independent, who you are is autonomous, and who you are is amazing, independent of anybody else, because who you are is not about anybody else. Who you are is about you. Not about me, not about anybody else, it's about you. When you recognize and own who you are, when you do that, then everything else will change. Because what you start realizing is, it's your life, because that's the thing. Even if you're in a family, if you're a parent or a child or a sibling or a, husband, a spouse, you are the... the um, the champion of your own life, you are the success in your own life, or you can be the victim of your own life. It's up to you to decide. But I do encourage you to look at your life from a different perspective, which is possibility. There's so much out there that you can learn from. And yes, there's tons of recorded seminars, webinars, teachings, courses, which you can do online now because a lot of going virtual because of what's been happening. The Inspired Heart Mastery, which I'm launching this week, hopefully we've been pushing back a couple of weeks because of all the big events happening in the world. We've been re-navigating re through that. Is an eight-week journey together virtually so it's safe <laughs> you can do it from your computer or your phone or your laptop um yeah to cover that right there are ways you can do this so my invitation is to reach out and get support if it's from me great if you're watching my video thank you if you do want to reach out to me message me on social media if you are looking for somebody else go do that but find what aligns to you and more of more important than anything else find inside yourself what aligns to you what do you want to bring to the world now? Because if anything, this is a good time to look at what you want to bring into the world. What do you want to birth, deliver, present? And I don't mean babies necessarily, although maybe you want to do things you're going to do. But understanding is what it is you want to bring into the world that is additive to what's out there. That requires you to look inside yourself. 
my gift is these talks and what's coming up in my coaching work. You define what is for you yourself. I think that's about it. I haven't seen any comments, questions, so I think we're okay. If you do want to reach out to me again, message me over social media, and if you have any questions particular or you want to find out more about what I was talking about, message me and let me know, and I'll give get back to you personally, privately, and uh, shortly. So if you haven't seen my broadcast, I've done, I, as I said, I did a thousand before, they're all on YouTube, um, and also these are now a new series of studies, number six, I, I started number from the beginning because I've got in the habit now. So these are my self-mastery guidance talks that may help you get where you want to go. This is a great time to focus on yourself, an important time to focus on yourself, and a powerful time to focus on who you are. It's also a good time to get to know who you are too, because you may not even know who that is in the mirror. Take the time to do that as well. So again, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, thoughts, message me. If you want to put them below in the comments, you can do that as well. I'll respond when I sign off. My, all, my continual reminder for my Facebook lives for years now has been, and I'll say again here because it seems to be appropriate, because this is one of the things I keep reminding my clients and reminding you of, is please, take care of yourself. With that, I'll see you again another time. These are not necessarily daily, but I do them fairly frequently now. Um, Facebook Live is my, my way to express myself in the world, virtually. I thank you for watching. I'll see you again some other time, and take care of yourself.